In a landmark development that could reshape the future of India's defense capabilities, the United States Congress has given the green light for a historic agreement between GE Aerospace and India's state-owned Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. This momentous deal aims to produce cutting-edge fighter jet engines for the Indian Air Force and it comes with unprecedented technology transfer and the component of local manufacturing in India. It all began during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's recent state visit to the US when GE Aerospace and HAL inked a memorandum of understanding to embark on this path-breaking deal. What makes this agreement truly really exceptional is that the US is known for guarding its advanced military technology closely even from its closest allies. However, this deal signals a seismic shift in Indo-US defense ties with Washington entrusting India with state-of-the-art and highly sensitive technology. So what does this approval by the US Congress mean for India and the Indian Air Force? Well, it paves the way for the full implementation of the agreement with HAL, encompassing technology transfer, local manufacture of jet engines and licensing agreements. The technology transfer will significantly accelerate the production of F-414 fighter jet engines, renowned worldwide for their exceptional reliability and performance. This deal also includes includes the co-production of 99 jet engines uh, which is expected to be cost effective due to the technology transfer that comes with it. So why is this deal a game changer? It's not just about bolstering India's defense capabilities, it's also about deepening the strategic partnership between India and the United States. And with this deal, the US has demonstrated its trust in India's capabilities and its commitment to strengthening bilateral ties. For over four decades now, GE Aerospace has been actively engaged in India, contributing to various aspects of the aerospace industry, from engines and avionics to services, engineering, manufacturing and local sourcing. Its extensive experience positions GE Aerospace as a reliable partner in this monumental venture. The benefits of this historic deal extend beyond the borders of India. Several US sites involved in the development of the F-414 engines will experience a surge in activity, creating job opportunities on American soil. Well, the two countries are poised to flesh out further details during US President Joe Biden's upcoming visit to New Delhi for the G20 summit next week. The high-profile meeting is expected to solidify the commitment of the US and India to further strengthening their strategic partnership in the area of defense and beyond. In a world where military technology is often closely guarded, this partnership does stand as a testament to the evolving global landscape. Okay, let's go back to Sri. Um, for more on this, Sri, of course, when the Prime Minister went uh, to the US recently on a state visit and this deal was inked, um, it was described as a game changer. It was described as path breaking for multiple reasons, some of which I have just enumerated. But given that there was this agreement in principle between the top two leaders of, uh, you know, India and the United States, was its clearance by the US Congress a mere formality after that? Because we have seen over the years and decades that uh, you know, uh, a commitment to this bilateral relationship has received bipartisan support in the U.S. Almost always, hasn't it? Well, yes, Neha. And, uh, you know, let's look at the global context in which uh, these agreements are coming in. Uh, this also comes at a time when uh, U.S. itself is moving away from China. Uh, from India's perspective, Neha, this is indeed a momentous kind of a deal. Uh, not just of the importance of the technology, it's the first time that the U.S. has actually agreed to transfer of this sort of a technology, a critical technology, an engine technology, which will not just, uh, uh, you know, uh, cater to the uh, current light combat aircraft, uh, you know, that India is working on, but also the future uh, planes that we might make, right? So that is very important. But this has to be seen in the context of the recalibration that India is doing. Uh, as far as its own defense capabilities are concerned. Uh, you will know, Neha, that for decades, we have been reliant on Soviet Union uh, for historical reasons, Cold War, when the U.S. was not willing to supply, uh, you know, critical technology to us. Uh, Soviet Union was the only one that could equip us, and, and not just equip us, but also uh, not put kind of any conditions on the use of those equipment, right? So the, there's a historical reason why we were reliant on Soviet Union for our, uh, you know, defense equipment. And now this marks a shift, uh, you know, at a very, very important and interesting time because don't forget, this is a moment when China is getting very, very close to, uh, you know, Russia. 
In fact, before the Ukraine war started, uh, you know, Putin was there meeting with uh, Xi and they announced a, 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 a no limits friendship deal. Right. So who is to say that tomorrow uh, Xi may not put pressure on Putin and start turning the screws on the supply of, uh, you know, technology, defense technology to India. So this is an important uh, uh, thing which India has done. But India is, again, not just reliant on U.S. We are creating other alternate partners. For example, we bought Rafael from France. We are talking to Israel for other innovative uh, technology, especially in radar and other uh, uh, missile technology we are working with Israel. So India is diversifying its reliance on defense technology suppliers. And at the same time, it is also building its own capabilities. Uh, that is a long-term plan because now you cannot overnight become, uh, you know, a, a, a sudden, uh, you know, you can't start making aircraft fighter jets on your own or sophisticated missiles and tanks on your own. It takes a long time. So that is a path on which India has started over the last uh, decade, Neha. And, uh, you know, this deal is very much in, in keeping with that spirit where India realizes that we have to reduce our reliance on, uh, you know, one specific country. We need to diversify our defense procurement and also at the same time build our own capabilities. So even today, 60 to 70 percent of our uh, equipment uh, is from Soviet Union. And I think even for decades to come, uh, we may be reliant on Soviet Union. But what is happening is we have started this uh, down this path of diversification, of finding new partners, new ways of, of uh, developing a critical technology. And we're also looking at self-reliance. So this marks a very significant uh, shift in India's own uh, defense uh, strategy in terms of the equipment, the defense industrial complex that we are creating, which will now work with the U.S. So this is a very significant move, uh, Neha. So momentous and milestones are, I think, fair objective, uh, objectives to use for this. Absolutely. And this is uh, expected to gain further momentum when President Biden is in New Delhi next week.